Oh, what a beautiful time of year. My plum trees, they smell so good. Wow, gotta love March. Looking good, smelling good. What a fragrance. And then the wind will come and the rain will come and all those pretty beautiful blossoms will be gone. That day will be a sad day. Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to the cabin. Thought I might want to touch base with you guys. It is uh, the last day of March. March 31st. And I hope you noticed uh, my blossoms out there on my plum trees. Quite a beautiful thing. So I thought I'd better get a shot of that. Let you guys see the beauty. I wish you had smell vision Because I would just send that fragrance right to you. Boy, it smells good. N nothing too overpowering either. I don't know what it is about Mother, mother Nature, but, um, you know, things happen. Hey, and speaking of things happening, i got to show you something. And I hope you get the full drift here. I'm going to bring it in a little closer to you. If you notice, this is a baby doll. I don't know how old it is. Having to have no clothes on too, by the way. I'm a little embarrassed about that but if you notice it's got a hole in it and if you those are guts coming out by the way I'm not knocking guts out it's actually full of dirt my uh, granddaughter Kaylee was over here digging in my spring that's now not running the water's all gone she found this little fella with no head no arms and then I started kind of bumping it on my hand very gently like this tap 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 and I broke it it was in perfect condition. I probably ruined a priceless antique. So, me bad. Me bad. I killed a doll. A headless doll. So I hope it doesn't come back to haunt me. But I thought I would just share that with you. No pun in cheek intended. But, um, yeah. Nice little find, eh? Anybody out there looking for a baby doll with no head and no arms? Uh, I got an extra one. So, give me a holler. I'm going to get back to you on that one, okay? Now, uh, thanks for being here. Well, good morning, guys. Today, we're going to start a fire. It's going to start with a boom. At least, I hope it does. Let's just say I put some chemicals on there to make the fire accelerate. So I got a piece of paper. I don't want to get too close to this because if I'm this close, it'll get me. Don't try this at home. Leave this to professionals. I'm not sure I am, but I've done this many a time in my life. So I'm gonna step out of the way. I'm gonna light this puppy and let's just see what happens. Yeah. Let's do it. Still too close. Here we go. Let's try this. Just listen for the boom. If my light will start. Oh boy. You picked a fine time to just leave me loose wheel. Yeah. Okay, that was a fail right off the bat. Well, howdy guys. Welcome back to the cabin. Let me get away from you far enough you can see me. I got a piece of paper in my hand. I got a lighter in my hand. I got wood in my pit. I've told you before, it's been a little wet. So today I'm cheating. We're going to use some uh, liquids in there to help boost the fire. It may start and give me a little bit of a boom. I can't be too close to fire. Because I'm two, three feet away from it right now. It would surely get me. So, lighter in hand, paper in hand. We're going to light this puppy up. And just uh, listen for the boom. Hope it'll be a good one, okay? I can smell it from here. 
And of course it's windy. Oh boy. Maybe I'll get my paper to burn. There's the secret, right? Gotta get the paper to burn. There it goes, there it goes. Wanna make sure it don't go out, so when it hits, it just goes kablooey. And there it goes, right out. Wow. Okay. That's pretty bad and you can't get paper to burn, right? Probably 50 degrees out here right now. Yeah, and I really can't get my paper burn. That's sad. Okay, so here goes, guys. Listen for the boom. Oh, crud. That was a fail. Crud. Woo! There it is. Well, no boom. There it is. There she goes. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, now, more wood. Can you hear them geese? Yeah, I can't film them, they're too far away, but... Easter Sunday. And uh, late in the year for the geese to be here, but you know what? Sometimes that just happens around here. How do you like that fire, huh? It's like instant. Put some chemicals on there to help give it the uh, wood a boost to dry it out and get it burning. I'm not saying that's the way you should do it. It's just the way one way I do it. But I got to tell you, it can be dangerous. It can be very dangerous, so I don't recommend you doing that all the time, or if you're near a building or near trees and you got a big old four-foot flame, uh, you could readily catch something on fire pretty quickly, so uh, be careful when you're using chemicals. I have uh, two fire extinguishers in the cabin right now, one for the stove and one for outside. I probably need to put one out here at my kitchen, just in case uh, someday I do something really stupid and fail. I don't want to do that, but I could, just saying. Um, been known to happen so uh, I'm a lot older and a lot more careful in my old age I think so bear with me because uh, the show just started and here we go off to a new adventure okay look at here folks I got some of my collection out look what I've been doing for the last year yeah, maybe I've been building a cabin. That's right, I have. But, I've been collecting pots and pans. See? Stews, beans, chilies. Let's cook. Hi, geese. Hi, guys. Boy, they're like 30 feet above me right here. Hi, guys. My neighbor over here has a lowland farm and they get water down on the bottom. The geese are over there all the time. They like it over there. Uh, Excellent old cornfield, whatever's left, they get. But like I was saying, pots and pans. I got lots of pots and pans. I got a mixing bowl. Paula Dean. Who heard of her, right? Paula Dean. I got a few others. Pie pan, another big pot. Believe it or not, most of this stuff comes from the Goodwill. Um, however, I do get into an antique store once in a while. This here, a Goodwill item. You know what that is? That's an aluminum Dutch oven. And I think it's made by, it's made by I don't know. There's no name. But it's old. I think it was like five bucks. I thought, you know what? Aluminum Dutch oven with a lid. Cheap. Love it. One of my holy grails, and I just found this just recently. This is a Griswold. These are expensive ovens to get. This one had no uh, no lid. And I think they wanted $35 for it. And when we walked in the store, they had 20% off of that. And I told my wife, I said, got to have it. 
she goes, okay. So here it is. One Griswold, my only Holy Grail Dutch oven. I'm tickled. And it, I don't know if you guys know anything about Dutch ovens or not. I don't know a, a lot or much. Only that people say they're the best. One reason why I think is because they're, they're thin. These are super thin cast. The Lodges and all the other brands, Wagner's and, and the BSR, the Birmingham Stove and Range, they're thicker. They're heavier. A lot heavier. And these, I mean, it just, it's nothing. It, it's almost as light as a pail. You get right down to it. And it's cast, cast iron, people. Cast iron. So, gotta love that. So today, I decided, you know what, I'm going to just show off some of my other stuff. The 12 inch Dutch oven you've seen many a time. I just did cinnamon rolls in it. Turned out fabulous. Here's a 10 inch with the wrong lid. This is a Wagner Dutch oven lid with the drippers. So if you can see that or not, are you getting it on film? Are you getting it out there? Okay, that's a Wagner. The little 10 incher here is a Lodge. As I said before, I bought this. Believe it or not, I bought this at an antique store. This thing was just covered in rust. It was pathetic. The guy had 40 bucks on it. Well, I'd seen it there off and on for six months. I kept thinking, you know, for 40 bucks, again, no lid. I go, to me, it's not worth that. Especially as rusty as it was. It's in excellent condition. It looks like it's never been used, actually. And I personally have never used it either. At least not yet. Um, so... That being said, I walked in about a week before they were going to close the place down. Everything was half price. This was still there. He wanted 20 bucks. And I said, you know what? It's awful rusty, but I'm going to take a chance on you. Bought it, took it home, took the old white vinegar. We scrubbed it for days. Scrub, scrub, scrubbed. And by God, we got her looking like new. So tickled to death with that one. That'll be a nice addition to my unit. I found out my uh, Wagner, my Wagner 10 and a half inch does not fit my uh, Griswold Dutch oven. It will not fit. But it does fit my Lodge really well. And I thought, well, I could use it. Worst come to worst, I could turn it upside down, put the coals on top. I could do that also. Um, but I think a Lodge, I can buy a Lodge lid. They're still available. So I'll probably just pick one of those up because that way I've got these, well not the Griswold, but the other Wagner will take a uh, the lid. It fits perfectly on it as well. So that lid fits two ovens. I think I still have two or three more Dutch ovens. One with legs, two without legs. So that gives me seven right now. Not counting the aluminum, which is number eight. The wife asked me the other day, she goes, how many Dutch ovens do you need? I said, I don't know. I said, I'm just going to keep buying them because if the price is right, I'm buying them. Now, whether I use them or not, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully someday. I think you've all seen my Aloha Dairy. That's from Aloha, Oregon. Someone had a dairy out there many, many moons ago. Gone now. All it is out there now is houses. No more dairies. So I got this old puppy. Coffee pot. Voila. This is a campfire coffee pot. No innards. So cowboy coffee, here we come. This one. Look at there. Got, got the innards in that puppy. So you can make coffee in your cabin or out in the fire. Take the innards out. Here's my big cowboy coffee pot. It does not have innards. I don't plan on using it for that. It's just going to be cowboy coffee only. And I have large groups. I've got coffee. Here's my little bitty. If I want one cup of coffee, just one cup, just for me. Look at that. It's got the innards. I got that at the Goodwill for about $3, I think. It is stainless steel. I would not want to put it on the fire because this wood would catch on fire and burn. And it would probably melt this plastic top. Wouldn't that be horrible? So we don't want to do that. It says on it, and this is a joke. This is, this is funny. Three cups, if you fill it to there. 
Are you serious people? Who drinks that little bitty tiny amount of coffee? This to me is maybe a one cup. One. Not three. Maybe it came from China and they're not aware how much coffee we drink. Oh, don't, I don't even want to look. It just make me mad if it said China on the bottom. Then I have to scratch it off and tell them it's from uh, Ecuador or something. Colombia. Wait, it is kind of heavy. Maybe there's something in there. Huh? Nah, I'm not going to look. Don't spoil the surprise. But it's a cute little coffee pot, I got to admit. So anyway, there is part of my collection. The Oregon Cabin Time Collection. It's a good starter set. My wife says, when are you moving out? I said, I don't know. I guess as soon as you kick me out. And I really never know when that day's coming. So I'm prepared. Zombie apocalypse? Maybe. Maybe. Okay guys, as you can well tell, my fire's burning here, got smoke going everywhere. I've been throwing some leaves on. And I don't know if you know it or not, but these dry leaves laying around here on my property, they blow into my outdoor kitchen. If I just get out here and I scoop them up. These guys right here, they blow into my outdoor kitchen over here they're dry they've been sitting all winter under cover they burn yeah they might smoke a little bit they're not like a wet leaf but uh, a dry leaf actually has a lot of punch makes a lot of heat and uh, if your woods a little damp it will actually help accelerate that damp wood so sometimes just gathering up some loose leaves um, throw them in the fire you know randomly once in a while just to kind of, kind of keep things going it's really a fire uh, booster it just helps around here I got this big giant oak tree and right next door to him is his friend the other giant oak tree and boy I tell you what do they dump a lot of leaves on the ground for me but um, I have no board here he's kind of wet too but with the fire burning underneath there should accumulate enough heat to get this board going. It'll dry out and it'll it'll burn good. So my other wood, also damp. There's a place near here where they do tree cutting and they make piles of wood. Piles. And you bring your chainsaw and you hack up what you want. A lot of time what I do is I'll go in there just driving by. I'll gleam some of the smaller stuff that I can pack off. I'll show you a piece. And this is typically what I get right there that's probably two three foot long I can chainsaw it in half my fire pits big enough if I wanted to and I'm gonna have a fire for hours I'd throw that in this thing would burn three four hours probably nice chunk of wood it's still a little damp but it's not bad and you know what free is a very good price so consider that consider that when you get free wood eh you take what you get now whatever that is 
I really don't know. I don't know what kind of wood that is, but it burns because it's wood. That is all that matters to me. Okay guys, well I'm gonna wrap it up today. It's Easter Sunday like I said. I'm getting on about noon. I've been up here since probably 10. Fiddle dinking around. Um, nothing better to do and I thought you know what? 50 degrees, it's warm enough. Fire in the background, it's a nice, uh, nice warm fire. I may just pull up my chair, relax a little bit before I go up. Um, I know the wife is down there prepping Easter dinner. We have family coming over about four. It's pandemic. I don't know if I told you or not, but I actually got both of my shots. I'm, I'm done. Um, I, I probably had them done a month ago, and I kind of kept thinking I ought to tell my audience that, that I've been vaccinated, so I've got the cure. People are telling me that they got sick, they got lightheaded, they had the COVID arm, all that kind of stuff. I just got dirt on mine, see? from wood um, but no um, when I got my shot the the day after I could feel it if I touched it if I never touched it I never knew I had it uh, after the next day it was gone so the day of the shot I didn't feel anything the day after the shot it was tender to the touch and the third day I had nothing it was gone no rash no sickness no puking no lightheaded none of that kind of stuff um, my wife did comment that after the second shot I was tired and I did actually just fall asleep in the chair a couple of times. I was kind of surprised at myself because I don't normally just uh, nap like that. Not regularly I should say. Um, but anyway, yeah, all went well. I got the cure. I feel good. Um, I'm hoping you out there are all doing well and uh, getting your shots as, as soon as you can and, and get taken that cure. Because I think once this is all said and done, we can all move on. Stop wearing a mask. I still wear a mask every day. Wherever I go, I still got to wear a mask. So be safe out there, would you? Just be safe. Live your life. Live it carefully. That's all I got to say about that. So adios and uh, happy Easter. We'll see you on the next video, guys. Oh, remember, like, share, and if you would please, subscribe. I need more of you people, okay? Adios.